Well, I've actually said that Kalapas are testicles according to popular belief. But I have said that if you would like to call your testicles Kalapas, that's fine. <laughs> well, Kalapas actually come from uh, the Buddhist form of med meditation, where Buddha essentially said that he came to the realization that all matter is composed of tiny subatomic particles that die as soon as they're born. So no sooner are they born than they die and there's continual regeneration. Which means all of us, you, me and everything else, is being reborn millions of times a second. And we call those tiny subatomic particles Kalapas. Interesting time actually for band names was when we were changing from rock machine to industry and there was a slew of horrible names. Home tattoo, ashram mothers, and a bunch of other things. Much alcohol was uh, used in the pursuit of the worst name you could possibly come up with. Since then, I had a band called Ams Fashanti, which elicited mixed reactions from various people. And then, of course, now there's Whirling Kalapas, which elicits mixed reactions, usually a look of confoundedness. I don't even think it would become a main project. If Whirling Kalapas were to get more active, and which I would like it to, and pay me more money, which I would love it to, and uh, get busier, which I would be really happy if it happened, then it would be a parallel project. I don't think it, it would ever sideline industry. Funnily enough, Whirling Kalapas started before we brought uh, industry back again. So I started it not, I guess, I think, I, yeah, I'm not even saying this. I started as a side project without having a main project because I was busy with other things, not music, not music related. And I didn't want it to be something that took over my life. So Mahesh and I did it with the same kind of lightheartedness that we would accord to a side project. A little bit of time here, the acoustic thing, let's bring in some covers, let's not write any stuff seriously for the band. That's changing now. So it is a side project still, but it's a serious side project and we're getting more and more active with the stuff. The EP is very much a part of that. And I'm already thinking of new ideas of how to take this on the road. Not just as a three-piece acoustic plink along act. I just thought, let's bring in covers of really interesting material, interesting songwriters that people either haven't heard of and that we love and we like them to hear, or songs by well-known people like bands like The Who and Tears for Fears, but songs that people are less likely to have heard but we think we would love to play and we think they should hear. So we do Blue, Red and Grey by The Who, which is really only Pete Townsend from the album The Who by Numbers. It's Pete Townsend and a ukulele, that's really the song in its original form. And we take it a little bit with acoustic guitars and, and mandolin. And we try and twist things around that way. Um, I've been suggesting most of the covers, whether it's Sofiane Stevens or Iron and Wine or any of these obscure, obscure tunes, or a song by Porcupine Tree. Uh, Mahesh is a big fan of uh, this uh, Australian guitar player called Tommy Emmanuel. Tommy Emmanuel essentially plays acoustic guitar and he's unbelievable. He's really, really, completely phenomenal. So Mahesh brought in a couple of Tommy Emmanuel songs. Well, one Tommy Emmanuel song from Mombasa, which we do in the set, which he and Shanky reworked again. Shanky brought in a, a second guitar part, which is not there in the original form. Mahesh debuted on stage as a singer. I shouldn't say debut, re-debut because he sang many, many years ago in the earliest days of Rock Machine. He used to sing a song uh, by Vishmo Nash, by British band called Vishmo Nash. So he's a big fan of Paul Simon, again a songwriter we love. So he said, let's just take a Paul Simon tune, which I think is a twist on a on nursery rhyme or something. April come she will. And we do that. So we, we try and do that kind of stuff. But we're writing more and more of our own material. So I think we'll be edging out the covers and then inching in the really weird covers from time to time. Very difficult question to answer. Well, we have half a Kalapas album with the EP, so it's a matter of filling it up with another four to six songs. But on the other hand, the indiscreet songs are brewing as well. So it's not a race to the finish. It's what evolves when it's meant to evolve.